Happy Monday, everyone. I figured I would do a follow-up video to the one that's based on the Law of Crime Concentration, where I joined points to streets, so a spatial join, I did the nearby element to it. I got some follow-up and feedback from it, and I figured it would be easier to do another tutorial video with a couple of different analysis tools and ways to visualize the data than I had prior. With that, I'm going to focus on person checks, also known as wellness checks, for Little Rock. This is their dispatch itself. For 2018, I thought I'd focus on this given a recent article by Jerry Ratcliffe up at Temple looking at Philadelphia calls for service, be it health and crime. Really cool data visualizations, how to summarize it and how to give an idea of uh, the time element spent on certain calls. I'll link to it in the YouTube video. Check it out. It's open source uh, or open to the public given it's in crime science. So with that, the layers already have up. I have the boundary of Little Rock. I already have the near XY, so what I had from LRPD were the lat long for the person checks. With that, I brought those over, projected them into the state plane south for Little Rock. Then I also clipped them or selected only the ones that occurred within the city boundary, then did the near XY to get the closest coordinates to the nearest street. If you're confused by that, watch my Law of Crime concentration video on why that's needed. If that's not clear, shoot me an email. I can always make a more detailed video specific to that. But I've already done that, so I'm going to be operating and using my near XY here at the top and the street file down here. So with that, in our toolboxes, I've already had installed or downloaded the Crime Analysis and Safety Tools. So with that, if you open it and drop it down, they have quite a few options and I'll add these to the YouTube channel and kind of go through each one. But with that, let's jump down. There's a nice one that's summarized incident count. You can summarize your counts, your points to streets with this tool. So with that, if we input our features again, if you just highlight over the eye, it's going to give you information about what it wants there. I want to put our street layer here. With that, I want to summarize the counts itself. So the near XY. Here it's going to output to, it should be my geo database. You can see I've already done it once before. So I'm going to put a two after it just so I know what it is. And trust me, I don't recommend this type of file naming. But since this is only an example and just that alone, I'm going to go for it. A search radius, typically you would need a search radius if you have an offset where it's pulling. There are some potential issues with that, but since I have already moved it, to the nearest XY. I'm going to keep it relatively small and just put five feet here. It's going to ask for the unit as well. And given I'm already in state plane, I know what unit it's in. And that's all I really need to do at this point. All it's going to do is take my street layer here and do a quick join of these here. So it's going to summarize and give me a count per street. So if I hit run, it's going to generate a new street layer for us, a new feature. Give that a second to run. And here we go. And it spits it out and generates a pretty cool line file already. And it breaks it down. These are natural jinx because jinx, I've already looked at it. And if you open in the symbology to it, you can see where it's for that. With that, you can change the values, but you can see here the ranges for it and the symbology, the color scheme itself. Personally, not a huge fan of this since it's all within kind of a reddish orange scale. You can always update it. If they have zero, you can always make that a null color itself. So I just don't want anything for that one right now, which is fine. So you can see where we actually have person checks, person calls. But with that, you can change the colors, you can change everything else. But if we open the attribute table, it's going to give you the join count, and that's going to be your person checks per street. So I'm going to open that attribute table up. If I scroll to the end, we're going to get all of our information. You can see it's still the 18,000 streets. This one is not cleaned up to where I delete anything, so it's just a true example video. Here it's already in decent count. I already double clicked it, 
But if I run the statistics, I'm looking to make sure that there's 3,357, which matches our near XY. So go to statistics. And this will give you your descriptive statistics based on the join itself. So we know there's 3,357 with a minimum of zero and max of 75. You can get your average, your median, and everything else you need to know from there. You can see that it's heavy skewed in kurtosis, which isn't a huge surprise given the data that we're looking at. But with that, it's, it's pretty cool to see and a very quick tool to use. The caveat is you can't do much with it other than a quick summarizing count of that, which alone is super handy. So the workflow of that is handy. But if we take a look at the near XY attribute table, the, why, the reason why I really like this data are here the event duration, which is in seconds, is truly that how much time was spent on that call given an XY coordinate pair itself. The LRPD crime analyst deleted duplicates out of this to where it's only one officer per call. Obviously, you can control and keep in when there's multiple officers, everything with that. But this gives us a good idea of what we're working with by street. When we use the, and let me hop back to it, the summarized incident count within the crime analysis and safety tools, it gives us that count, which again is useful, but it limits on what you can join in. And this is where I'll walk through another process of, if you wanna keep in this field, you can. And I highly recommend it because you might wanna do a sum, so how much time is spent per street segment, the average time spent per street segment, everything with that, it matters in the end. Again, this was already calculated by LRPD, but given the call time and call close, you could calculate this on your own if needed. But for me, I didn't have to, I lucked out with that. And these are a couple other just qualifiers for firearm and juvenile status of the call. So with that, what I've learned kind of going through it and trial by fire with it, is I want to add two fields. And at this point, I want to add a field that's going to be the sum. So the sum of the call time per street and then the average. And I'll show you why this matters on in a couple minutes, but I'm going to add field. And at the bottom, I'm just going to put time sum. And again, I'm going to leave this as a double if it lets me, there we go. And it's gonna be numeric. Gonna click okay. Then I'm gonna add a second one. Time mean. Because, and this is why it's important, it will give you options to do different summary statistics when you're joining the two. But what I found out is if you add them, you can't calculate, you can get min, max, but you cannot do a sum or average or anything with that. So I'm preemptively doing this knowing an issue I ran into on the back end when I was already trying this. So make this one a numeric as well. Click OK and make sure you hit save on this. And this is just going to make it easier going forward. The field values itself are going to show, show null. Fine with that for now. We don't need to do anything with that. Save all changes, I've already done that, so we're good to go there. All right, so if I open up the attribute table, I'm just double checking that it's saved at the end. And we see here, they're truncated right now, there we go. Space them out. Only have zeros here, so we're good to go. And now the other option that we've done before, and I'm just gonna turn this street layer off, is if we right click and go to a spatial join, what I'm gonna end up doing now, similar to what we've done before, is joining my points, my person checks to the streets themselves. So I already have, cause I wanna join information to the street. I wanna join my points to that, so my person checks There we go, the near table. Again, this one has a two after because I've already saved one. So this one's saving to a geo database. Again, I'm fine with that. 
because this is an example. I'm going to keep the two at the end of it. We're good to go there. One to one. It's going to be an intersect based on this is already at the join to it. And here when we drop down the fields option, this is why it's important here. So I'm going to scroll down to the ones I just added to the table. You can see now I have time sum and the time mean. So if I right click on it, or just click on it in general, the merge rule is only going to give me the first, but I actually want it to be the sum itself. So that's going to sum the time itself, but here I'm going to change how that's being calculated. So I want this to be from the near XY, and I want to go down to the event duration. I'm going to add selected, and now it's going to give me the sum of that one itself. Similar to the mean now, I'm going to change this one to the mean. Exit out of the timing, so keep in mind these are zeros right now. I'm going to change this. It, Make sure you have your person XY, event duration, add selected. And now we have that as part of it. When I mentioned before the issue you run into, so say I had this, I wanted to add a field. So I click here and I wanted to do time median. So that's adding. We have a, oops, let me just put it in again. I didn't hit enter. So we have a new variable, we haven't told it what we want it to be. So with that, if I came in here and change this to the duration again, did I scroll past it? Yep, add selected. You don't have as many options here when you're adding in it at this stage. You have first and last, your count, min, max, and the join itself. You don't have the option to do a sum, average, median, mode, standard deviations, as if they were already in the table. So that's where we're using that to our benefit here. With that, I just deleted it, but now I can click OK. And that's going to run for us. And keep in mind, this might take a few moments, minutes, given you're taking your points and merging them to or joining them to the streets itself. I'll click pause here just to free up some time. All right, you can see I kept here. It took about six to seven minutes to finish this. It took longer this time than the first time. I'm not sure exactly why, but it still generated our final output for us. So here, if we open our attribute table, we're gonna have the join count. So the join count here, again, is gonna be our person checks, our wellness checks by the street. And again, we see the 75 as our max. The part at the end that we want to double check on. So if we have, let's see here, our time sum, and I'm just going to see if this ended up being correct. We would hope our time sum, so we have one, seven, three, three, eight, four, divide by, because this one had 75. And we get the same answer. So this process did work. I'm not going to lie. I didn't check that before doing this tutorial. But it did actually sum the seconds itself. So if we divide this by 60, the average person check for this street lasted about 38 and a half minutes per call itself. So if we zoom into this specific street, we can even see that it's West Roosevelt and not surprising no one what's around here but we can see that here again this gives you a couple different options as well if you want to do from a symbology standpoint of we have total sum we have the average time spent so we can actually look at the discrepancies based on number of calls versus how much time is actually spent on average per call for that street itself so here if we wanted to do a graduated color again you could do this, and if you ever get this notification up here of sample size, default sample size is set to 10,000. If you go into your advance, you can change this based on, if you see here, we have over 18,000 street segments. Just change this to 20,000, and it'll pull those for us. I'm going to click here just so I can get rid of the clear option there. So if I come back, we have our join count, but if I want to change this now to our time mean and I want to break this down again quantile is kind of my go-to 
change these values just so I have the high ones up top. So if we do that, let me exit out of here. I'm going to change my base layer as well because I want to have it a, be a dark one so we can see a bit easier. There we go. So as I zoom out, you can see the breakdown of these. Obviously, the yellow kind of takes over the map. So if, again, you can always change this if you just click on it, hop over to properties. If you don't want to give it a color, that's fine. You can hide it or you can give it a, a kind of a gray so it's not as identifiable. You can even change the transparency if you wanted to. But now you can see some of the high areas for person wellness checks based on average time on call. Not surprising, we see street by street variation. So it's kind of what we would expect given our other place-based research of street by street, you're going to see change over. Even as we zoom in, you can see there's even neighboring streets that are complete opposites. Some don't even have calls given the average time if we look at it that way. So you can see place does matter when it comes to person checks, wellness checks for Little Rock itself. Now, if there's questions with this, please reach out and let me know. I went over again the summarized incident count that's in our crime analysis toolbox here. A quick way to get a count based on what's happening at a street, or you can even do polygons, a quick summarized count itself. Then I went through another way of doing a spatial join and keeping intact some other time features, which are pretty helpful from an analytical purpose. If you have any questions, please reach out. If not, take care. Bye.